I'm beat. Do you like anime titties? No? Well, good. We're watching beach episodes. I'm expecting a good beach episode to have any of these qualities. They develop a character or story in some way, they develop a relationship between characters, and it acts as a good breather with lots of fun or a fake out. And obviously- Anime- No, no, no! Please no! Aw, <laughs> oh, jeez, Mick, you got watermelon juice all over me. <laughs> Look at her body, what the hell is that? She looks like she's got the One Piece disorder. Whoa, roasted! Up tilted his ass to the friend zone. I'll see you like this dude. What, did the last guy not share the same diet with you? Water and salt? <laughs> you guys want that water diet? <laughs> Bro, what if her agency sees this and fires her? She's just like, no, I thought it was water. It had water in its name, watermelon. I drink the water in the lake. Not gonna lie, I saw this anime before, and I thought it was boring then, and I still think it's boring. And you don't seem to understand. Uh, hey, wait! And you don't seem to understand. That's red algae. Oh, you think that's funny? I mean, there was a bit in developing a relationship and a bit in developing the mystery. This idea of a curse for leaving Yomiyama is kind of looming this episode, and especially in this bit. I wonder why. Oh yes, this is it! <laughs> Dude, this death came out of nowhere. The, the fake out is alright, but this is just straight up comedy material. My favorite death is probably the umbrella one. If you've seen the anime, you know what I'm talking about. I just imagine Mary Poppins going down the stairs and she's just like, Spoonful of sugar makes the medicine. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's great! Knee slapper! Okay, so that was another. It was alright. It had some development, but it was kind of boring to be honest. Uh, I don't know. I find the deaths to be really funny though. It's not that I'm a psychopath that's looking at horribly goofy deaths and finding it funny. It's more that I'm a sociopath that's finding horribly goofy deaths funny. We all love Bleach, and moreover, we all like Rangiku because of her hugely malignant personality. It's just so infectious, I love it. So yeah, if you're a Christian boy, uh, avert your eyes. Wait, what? Naval? Are you an Audi? It's alright if you are, fam. Half the universe is. Is she what, scared of the fishes judging her? Yeah, we in the no pullout gang. Whole lot of gang activity. Too many choosing bikinis, not enough sand in my ants. Ants in my pants. Bars make you dance. Bus put you in a trance. There's a lot of fan service, and although you'd expect me to say that it's bad, uh, it's a beach episode. You, what am I gonna do? You can't get offended by boobs when you're in a beach. That's a pretty good exception. <laughs> Damn, hella disrespect. Hit her with a sir. You, uh, you good there? No lie, there are a lot of funny moments here. This one has absolutely nothing important, but I don't care for the most part. Only issue I have with it is that it's in the middle of an arc and it's not really fitting for that arc. It's just a random filler episode for no reason. However, I'd say it's leaps and bounds better than another. It's just really fun. Oh, you think that's funny? Okay, so I'm gonna take a break from what I've been doing. I think Toradora has a really good beach episode. I know I've been clowning around, but I've got your attention and I want to break from it a little bit. I threw the series a decent on Mal, but I do have to say this is one of the better episodes of the entire series. Ryuji in the series kind of has an issue with his dad leaving his mother before he was born. His mom works at a whorehouse, I think. And with the introduction to the start, it kind of implies bad things are to happen if Ryuji falls in love with Taiga. And it's even reinforced by the joke where Taiga has the same dream as Ryuji. The plan they mention in the beginning is for a mutual goal they have. That is, Taiga wants the boy in their friend group, and Ryuji wants the pink haired girl. And they both help each other out on matchmaking essentially. 
So far, you can obviously see why I'm much more inclined to watch it. It starts hyper-focused on the task of getting together with your crush. And because they came with a clear goal, it always stays interesting because of the interactions Ryuji and Taiga have with their crushes. Which is a lot. To add to it, the characters are already pretty interesting except for Taiga's crush. Which in my opinion, is way better than the cast of another because they have emotions. And also better than the giant cast in Bleach's episode because it's a smaller group that we, you know, actually know. The entire thing has a lot of fun episodes. Like the latest member acting like they don't know their weird friends. Or even Taiga's crush having seaweed pubes. But I think the biggest thing is that there was a development in a friendship and a romance. A friendship between Taiga and Minori. Oh wait, no. A friendship between Ryuji and Minori. And at the same time, a sort of romance progressing. You even hear Taiga recalling back to that dream saying, Ryuji, I've been thinking, that dream wasn't before quitting what she was saying. Even though she doesn't say it, we clearly knew she was talking about the marriage part of the dream and not the superstitious dog part. It was a touching moment and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Now uh, I gotta get, I have to say something funny. Um, seaweed pubes! <laughs> That's a funny line. Oh, you think that's fun? Hey, you like this video? Why not leave a like and smash that subscribe button. Decimate it. Bye.